Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's uh, CubaCon. Here's uh, have our distinguished speakers here, and I'm uh, their friend also to be uh, today's um, uh, today's yes today's small guest uh, and host. And also um, our our session, the theme of today, is Zen and the art of OSPO maintenance. Uh, the group reflection of OSPO summits. And uh, I'd like to have um, our guest here, let them to first introduce themselves and then have the session. Also, very thank you for all the friends who come here today. Thank you. Please. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nadia from Art Group, and before this, uh, I was the co-founder of Sigma Fault, uh, China's largest developer Q&A community. And it was during that time uh, with Jian Shengli and Zhi Qiangyu, uh, who unfortunately uh, couldn't make it to Hong Kong today. Uh, but it's also part of the OSPO Summit and the uh, LF APEC evangelist team that we launched the first OSPO Summit uh, in China with the support from To Do Group, Linux Foundation, and many more uh, communities. Uh, it is my honor to be here today with some of my friends. Uh, I look forward to, uh, to review and look forward to our OSPO Summit uh, and to share some thoughts on OSPO maintenance from those of us uh, working in different companies and uh, roles. Now, as you can see, today's panelist is a group of people with great diversity that are all uh, experienced in open source and OSPO uh, and coming from different companies and communities such as Ant Group, uh, Huawei, uh, ByteDance, uh, will work as an independent evangelist. Uh, so first of all, please briefly introduce yourselves. Uh, which company or community are you from, and what role do you play in your OSPO uh, or in organizing the OSPO Summit? So begin with Zhenghua. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Sun Zhenghua, uh, Open Source Legal Counsel at uh, Bedance. Uh, actually, my team is um, uh, my team is in the intellectual property department, and uh, we are also part of our open source uh, uh, program office. Uh, in 2022, we ni uh, initiate our open source program office and introduce open chain standard to uh, implement our open source uh, compliance system. As for the open uh, OSPO summit, I think I'm a quasi co-founder. I contribute some ideas, but actually, Jian Sheng and Zhi Qiang they do a lot of true efforts. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Li Jian Sheng. Uh, I am an uh, open source evangelist and also RF APAC evangelist. Yeah, Copper and Liu Jie. Uh, I am. Uh, uh, co-founder and chair of uh, Open Source uh, Summit. Yeah, I think I believe uh, the open source is good. So <coughs> open source is good for every organization. So I uh, am an OSPO advocate too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jie Liu from Huawei. Uh, in the I used to work in Huawei OSPO in the past seven years, and recently I have some position change, moved to the strategy planning department, but still focused on the ecosystem, uh, software ecosystem. And uh, uh, about the Richard and I, we are the uh, co-chair for the second OSPO summit, and really nice to have this chance to speak here. You want to do hard? <laughs> No, I'm good. Hello. Yeah. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Richard C. Kambian. Uh, I'm the current OSPO leader of Ant Group. Uh, I actually wear like uh, multiple hats. Um, so besides the work at Ant Group, which is my primary job, and I put a lot of efforts and dedication in there, uh, I'm also working as a volunteer with the Linux Foundation and Data, and I'm working as outreach chair. 
uh, which we also have the AI dev here uh, locally um, in this event channel as well. So feel free to reach out to me uh, discussing anything about FAI as well. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm a very active volunteer in the community as well. So uh, me and Liu Jie, we are like the co-chair of um, this year's OSPO Summit, and we actually learn a lot from it. Um, and that learning actually inspired all our talk here today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Richard, Liu Jie, and Zheng Hua, you each come from different companies, OSPOs. Uh, when it comes to uh, the work at OSPO, I think the topic of value and challenges can never be avoided. Uh, we all know that a company can get many benefits uh, from participating in and contributing to open source. However, building and uh, building um, an effect, uh, building and Mm, effectively running an uh, OSPO uh, is still challenging with many difficulties. Uh, what challenges have you encountered? And how can we create value and ensure our, uh, our value being uh, recognized? Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, OK, sure. <laughs> Uh, so I would say, f uh, f first thing first, um, um, just kind of coming from Andy Group's perspective, uh, we actually built our OSPO like in 2021. Um, interesting enough that Liu Jie mentioned that she ch changed her job from OSPO to a strategic group. I changed from my job, I changed my job from strategic group to OSPO. <laughs> um, so I, I actually joined Andy Group as a, uh, as a strategy in, uh, initiative um, uh, uh, expert. Um, so on the first year, we actually have multiple projects in which we run, uh, including but not limited to like privacy, preserving computation, uh, like knowledge graph and open source. And open source became the one which was actually came into fruition. Uh, so we ended up building the OSPO, and then we kind of grow the team from like two percent to like six people now. Um, and we change our team name from OSPO to like growth team. Uh, it's actually, it's, uh, it's called like technical growth team. And we're actually trying to promote the idea um, of um, um, kind of moving more towards a community-led growth hack each kind of initiative for what our team is currently doing. Um, but I would say that, you know, it's only the very beginning part of it. Um, so back to the, the question that we had at the very beginning, um, I would first came to say that building OSPO is actually a pretty big challenge. Um, it's, it's extremely difficult, especially in the um, Asian cultural environment. Um, yeah. I'm being very candid here, um, because there's no point for us to kind of think something glorious as, hey, you know, this is the greatest thing on the planet, you should go and do it. I wish I can say that, but based on my personal experience, no. Um, so some of the challenges came from the aspect that you need to manage up and managing down. And thanks so much, I don't have to managing up now, uh, because I have a pretty nice boss who is sitting down there. <laughs> Well, but I mean, like by saying that, uh, I really mean it because uh, having uh, a leader which is fully understanding how open source works is actually a pretty, it's such a strong blessing uh, in a big Chinese corporation. Um, and at this moment, we have one, but we did actually have our challenges in the past of trying to work with our leaders and really kind of trying to quote unquote convince them by providing a set of factors in which you need to take multiple iterations on, um, you know, like because it doesn't necessarily work as a way that you hope it will work. Um, on the second, uh, on the second half, you also need to manage it down um, because you know most of the hospitals actually begins with a virtual team. Um, yeah, you need to work with the projects, and the project will actually take a different. Uh, I would say. Um, it kind of takes different perceptions on your work, right? Some, uh, some of them, like, they're highly cooperative. They throw a lot of, you know, like, requirements to you, and they're like, wait a minute, I'm like two-man team. Uh, we cannot help you with other requirements. And they're like, why do we need you then? Um, and on the, on the other hand, a lot of the work are more, like, I would say, uh, strategic related. So it, it means that you need to put a lot of effort at, at the very beginning to engage with the team at, from the very top. Uh, to align with the goals, to set uh, set up essentially like very early engagement and take you know sprints and iterations, but then the product team was like, why do I need someone who is not reporting to my leader to do such a, I would say very in depth job? Why should we trust you? So the trust will come from the aspect of um, you have to work with the team for a while to begin gaining trust and then begin entering a deadlock situation. Yeah, so I would say the first, like the cold starting part is really difficult. Um, we made through by, um, I would say through like making small victories. 
um, and essentially trying to really understand the aspect of open source, spend time with the community, and thanks so much, Byron, for having been helping me uh, and and group in the past four years. I mean, like I, I remember every bit of it. Um, I, I'm being very serious. Uh, and in terms of value creation, uh, I pretty much covered all the aspects. So we need to generate value by providing value to the overall corporation because, after all, OSPO is in charge of the corporation. You know, like you're not responsible for a particular project. But on the other hand, um, you can already do open source by doing open source alone. Um, so we had a couple of small chats like, you know, in the past couple of days, is that now we're kind of like really kind of back to the principles is we, uh, first thing first, we want our project to be successful. Second, we really want to uh, spend more time to work with the product team and the technical team and really put the value down uh, to not only saying that, hey, you know, we are an open source team, but we don't understand our product. No, that's not how it works. It's more like we're open source team, we understand open source works, we understand how to do outreach, we understand how to do product design, we also understand how to build tools which can help you step by step. Yeah, so that's pretty much, I would say, um, a very candid and challenging current situation, but we do have really high hope moving forward. Um, actually, we uh, in Binance we have the first open source release process uh, in uh, 2019. At that time, our uh, CEO Zhang Yimin pro approved this first process, and gradually we released more and more open source uh, projects. And uh, of course, we have more and more uh, products consume a lot of open source components. And, and many tech leaders think that it's necessary for us to have a uh, cross-function uh, team to manage open source, uh, including uh, consume, contribute, and uh, uh, release maintenance open source projects. Uh, and I think the mission is right, and for uh, each uh, uh, open source program office, they should focus on these three areas. But the question is that many uh, tech leaders think that uh, open source is good for them uh, because open source could build trust and transparency for some business unit, and uh, uh, some tech leaders think that it could uh, it, uh, open source would help them to build a open and modernized uh, architecture, uh, software at architecture. Um, but however, uh, some uh, tech leaders do not believe <laughs> open source can. Uh, bring them such benefits, and uh, maybe it's hard to change their mind. Uh, so, how to find more sponsors uh, within an organization? I think is a uh, big challenges, uh, and a second challenge I think is uh, how to uh, align the open source development with the uh, business or tech uh, values uh, within one company. Uh, and if you can persuade the executive management to uh, know the value of open source bring to the business value or the tech value, I think uh, the open source, uh, open source program office can have more resources from the company. Uh, and uh, I think there are also a third uh, challenge here is that uh, whether the OSPO can learn from the uh, community, uh, or even whether uh, uh, OSPO can evolve by himself. This requires OSPO could learn the new technology or the new trend of the uh, new trend of technolo technology and the needs of the frontline uh, developers. I think it is quite crucial for the OSPO can uh, face these three challenges. Yeah. Uh, I really agree with you, especially. Uh, I think if I pick one of the most common challenges for OSPO, it must be how to get more sponsors. <laughs> and it, um, because last year uh, I go to uh, attend the KubraCon Europe, and uh, I find that in the OSPO roundtable, everyone, not only us from China, <laughs> everyone is asking, oh, how could I tell my boss to give me more support? How can I get more people, more resources, more budget? 
everyone globally. <laughs> it's a global situation. <laughs> so, uh, because I recently I changed to uh, the strategy de de um, planning department, uh, something uh, maybe the angle changed. So I find that uh, because in the past there are sometimes that uh, I, we we always think like, uh, okay, um, this is very important project, and uh, we know that uh, company A, company B, they are working really hard into that. So we must do the similar things. We must enhance our investment in this project. That's our way to get try to get most uh, sponsors. But it's, a lot of time, it doesn't work. <laughs> People will say, OK, mm, we will dec <laughs> decide it later. I'll since we go like like that, but uh, uh, since I moved to the strategy planning department, and uh, I kind of like it's more like uh, put my sh foot into their business leaders' shoes. You will find there's so many things to considering to balance. In that case. If we cannot, uh, I mean, the Oswald guys, if we cannot, uh, we don't know what the business leader, their challenges. We don't care about that. Of course, they will ignore your, all your requests <laughs> because it's not the top list things for them. That's one thing that I, I, I think uh, it's very important to for Oswald guys because uh, you can't ask every project and the leaders they uh, get to know the whole big picture. If if you are the Oslo guys, our, our guys maybe uh, just doing Oslo related workings, uh, I think you are at least you are the one in your company need to try to know what the business leaders challenges, what do they care about, then bridge their challenges and their needs with open source community requirement. That's the one thing and the, one, the key point to do the balance and to do the translations. OK, thank you so much for sharing your um, experiences. And I think that is uh, why we um, uh, why we need to come together. Uh, we. Uh, uh, that is just because uh, we see these challenges, so we come together and we need to build consensus on um, unstandardized matters and uh, encourage those who are ahead to uh, share their experiences and lessons and provide a platform for everyone, for more people to communicate openly and uh, equally. Uh, this is uh, this is why uh, I. Um, I founded the OSPO Summit with Jian Sheng two years ago. And Jian Sheng, you are also the chair and co-founder of the first OSPO Summit. Uh, how do you think about it? Oh. <coughs> OK, uh, why OSPO Summit? Uh, just like uh, always said, uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's, for me, it's normal. Uh, I, 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 <coughs> Initial project, uh, you know, ten thousand uh, uh, open source <coughs> travel for we are going to uh, our company and and uh, Huawei and <coughs> and uh, uh, and not not going to better days and uh, some red hat. So uh, <coughs> we need a, a network. We need a communication. Uh, so uh, we. <coughs> Meet up uh, every month. Uh, or, uh, so we hold the OSP summit. For me, it's normal. So we need a, a, the big party. <laughs> so we need more people in our this. So yeah, we <coughs> we need a network. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Richard and Liu Jie, as the chairs of the second OSPO Summit, uh, do you have any stories you'd like to share? Okay. 
Uh, I totally agree with Jian Shen uh, because I still remember when we visit uh, Red Hat Hospital uh, travel things. Uh, one thing, one sentence is marked <laughs> by me is that uh, uh, communica communication is the most important thing. Uh, I think that's the reason why we. Uh, doing the also summit stuff because uh, there's a lot of people asking that, uh, okay, you guys, you also guys, you gather together for, for what? <laughs> you, you are um, kind of like a team building, but you're from different company. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, there's uh, a lot of open source event. Why you guys need a special one? Uh, I, I think for the also summit, uh, it's most like uh, uh, last year I visited a, a, diff a lot of OSPO office in different companies. Uh, there's one moment because everybody talked to me that uh, Huawei open source team uh, really have big office and uh, really big uh, uh, OSPO office and you got a lot of people. Uh, I never buy it because I, I think we are so busy. How could you say we have too many people? Until last year, I visited different companies. I find, yes, there's a lot of companies, they only have even less than one person to do the OSPO job. They are trying to, they kind of burn out, although, although we are not maintainer, but yes, they are burned out. And uh, another thing is because uh, I find uh, uh, we want we always want to collaborate with different uh, uh, companies and different com open source project, uh, but there are, of course there are a lot of conflict <laughs> or misunderstanding. And after uh, some communication and engagement, we find that uh, you know what it's not. Sometimes it's not uh, about the. Uh, business value or something like that. There's no technical conflict. It's just uh, simply we have different uh, understanding of the same world. That's the reason why I think Oslo Summit is very important because Oslo guys is the one who um, who pu uh, promote the open source culture and open source related concept even open source, how it works, to the whole company. It's a guy inside his company to do the translation, to introduce open source to his company. He's the most important guy to uh, bring the whole company to, uh, uh, to embrace the open source. So I think we should do something to help help and uh, help them and help ourselves to make the OSPO work not so hard because there's too many things we can share and we can discuss together. Uh, I think that's the effort. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, um, I guess first thing first, thanks, Luigi, for being the co-chair uh, with me this year. Um, it's actually one of the reasons I, I think we kind of made the joke. It's like, you know, one of us can already carry this through, but, you know, we put like, both of us together, like, you know, we have enough strength and, um, you know, rationale to really push this forward. And another thing is, like, kudos to Jian Sheng, right? He's an evangelist, and I'm his byproduct. <laughs> So like, he successfully convinced both of us to, to be the co-chair second year. So thanks so much, Jian Sheng, for that. Um, so to the reason why we have the OSPO Summit, um, I would say that um, people here, you know, we are open source related, right? So there's one keyword in open source which is super important. It's called consensus. So everything that we're doing is actually leading to a consensus. Um, but when you're actually like, at a stage in which you're not really get, get to the level that you're close to a consensus, the only thing you can do is to take iterations and new information and bring that to a discussion to take effective iterations so we can discuss, rinse and repeat, and do it again and again and again. And do that for code, you will get a product called open source project. And do that for community, you'll get something called like community of community, 
which I would say the open source network is one of those. The challenge with that is um, if you think about the code, right? Code is basically the most scientific thing you can ever get on the planet. It's binary, it's right or wrong. But on the other hand, on the open source side, you have something which is extremely literal. It's called community. Community is probably one of the least deterministic group on the planet. And doing a community of a community is extremely hard. This is why getting to a consensus, I would say that sometimes you know, uh, the regulatory part is relatively clear, but even for securities, I think we have like some talks about CVEs right, later on, on the stage. Even for something like that, it's very hard to reach a consensus. So having the discussion is extremely important. That's actually one of the reasons why we decided to do it on the, on the first place. Uh, on the second hand, uh, once you kind of reach a state that you realize you need to have a um, you know like a discussion coming, so there will be situations that you know like you're either the leader or you're the follower. And if you kind of feel like you're the leader, the best strategy to do with to to do is to bring your practice into the discussions so that they can empower more people, because that's what the community do. And if, the f and if you are the follower, because I mean, when I began my work in uh, 2021, I remember my first time going into uh, open source events, I was like the dev together in 2021. I was like standing there knowing nobody. And it just like, feels like so lonely. Yeah, like, it, 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 I mean like now reflecting back on that, like sitting on the stage is easy, but you know, I, that feeling is real. So we kind of realized that, you know, when, when we actually begin doing all the OSPO work, there's very little, support we can get from the community because there's just not enough discussion about it. So having a conference about the OSPO discussion is not only going to be benefiting the OSPO group, but it's also going to be directly or indirectly benefiting the project teams. Because if the OSPOs are not really function as a, at, at its best manner, the project teams are left alone. It's basically your de facto core, right? It's like you do your own business. Nobody is helping you from the company side. So that's actually the, essentially the second motivation, I would say the primary driver coming from our side. And for the last part, I really want to echo what uh, Liu Jie mentioned just now, because we used to be working on the strategy initiative side, and later this year, um, we're actually working uh, uh, very closely with our business leaders. Um, I used to be working in the States, and um, uh, Andy Group is actually my first job in China, and there's one, one word which I learned on my first week of uh, work is called Yeo. I was like, what the hell is Yeo? <laughs> right, it's like, but everyone tells you, oh, okay, this is the Yeo leader, and this is like the other leader. The other leader was pretty much like the technical leader and product leader. But what the hell is Yeo? Yeo is business, right? It directly translates into business, but it basically equals to everything of the company operates minus product and engineering. That's freaking ridiculous to me. Because I mean, like, I come from a, a culture in which you know, engineering is driving the so-called business, right? Is that you, as an engineer, like, especially if you're a running engineering company, you're supposed to be leading that, you know, like, drive that initiative. But someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, the year leader, you know, when they speak to you, you better listen. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's basically the status quo. So in order for us to actually, this is actually why, you know, this is our slogan this year, right? So it's basically unleash the power of open source. In order for you to actually unleash the power of open source, it's not going to be possible for you to, you know, like stand on open source uh, perspective, aka the product and engineering, and tell the EU leaders, hey, you, you have to do things this way. You have to come to their side and really kind of do the immersive experience, and then comes back to the, hey, you know, I've been there. Dude, I know how you're doing your uh, operations. I can tell you that this will help you rather than causing problems for you. And we need more of that discussion rather than less. So that's basically our motivation. Yeah. And is there any unforgettable stories while organizing the OSPO Summit? Uh, I think one thing is just like I'm... Um, uh, mentioned in the end of the second OSPO summit, the benefit to being the co-chair is that you can kind of uh, make the event the thing you, you, you really want. Already. Uh, <laughs> Agree. <laughs> so, kind of, kind of. Yeah. Uh, so uh, about the OSPO summit, uh, normally it should be 
looks like this. We are talking, you are listening. Uh, so, okay, uh, sometimes it's boring, so I just uh, use my laptop. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, one thing that we really do a bold <laughs> uh, try is that uh, we introduced the uh, Uncon unconference session into our OSPO summit. And uh, to be honest, uh, I still think it's the most amazing part and the most uh, interesting part for the whole event. And uh, yes, maybe because it's on conference session, so the people maybe uh, will be reduced because there's no clear topic. As, so some, no, uh, for a lot of person, they don't know what they can get from the that session. But uh, the people who attend this on conference sessions, they find uh, finally there's an event they can also participate into it, be part of it, and uh, asking the questions they really um, want to know and ask, get maybe get some really question, um, really answers, because it's on conference session. There's no recording. Everybody says, okay, I really don't do it. it. It doesn't work at all. Everyone speaks the truth. And uh, the pain, the challenges, uh, the lessons, is, uh, I think at least for the Oslo guys, we need such kind of uh, unconference sessions to get some really communications and really like work, a com like works like a community. That's something I, I think it's a benefit for be the co-chair and it's, it's the most amazing part of the OSPO Summit. Yes, in the unconference, everyone, every attendee can become the creator, yeah. And for today's last topic, uh, as experienced OSPO professionals, what are the top advices you would give to new OSPO leaders? That's from Zhenghua. Yeah, actually I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm a newbie in open source because I just started open source in, uh, from uh, 2019. Yeah, uh, I can share my experience here. Uh, the first one is uh, learn from the community and engage with the community. And uh, many, uh, as far as I know, many companies share their stories and uh, their journeys in open source. And for the newcomers, uh, we, can, uh, we can learn a lot from their experience and avoid uh, conflicts uh, when we communicate with uh, these stakeholders. And the second one is that uh, as I mentioned before, we, we should uh, uh, seek for more s uh, sponsors from the com companies, and we uh, thus can make the uh, OSPO work more uh, sustainability, right? Uh, and the third one is that I think we should learn uh, the needs of the uh, frontline developers, uh, and we can know their practice, uh, their current practice of uh, open so uh, of software developments, and. Uh, the OSPO thus can have the ability to evolve itself to uh, support the developers, uh, and uh, because the uh, developers are the real drive to open source. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm trying to uh, <coughs> tell a story, <laughs> share a story, uh, like just like uh, e e economic list. Yeah, think like economic list. Uh, Without uh, some clear working, the, our city is <clears throat> cannot work. Uh, if without uh, economic list, yeah, the, the city will work well. So um, just uh, also like uh, over <laughs> like you know what? So uh, we <clears throat> without OSPO, the company or some <clears throat> some organization is work well. But uh, some OSPO in <clears throat> have uh, worked well. If you <coughs> uh, if you open source economic is unique, so uh, it's very complex. So that's a, uh, our college. 
uh, it's very hard, so it's very challenge. So I have no answer. Yeah, I just uh, learning and I just uh, doing doing something uh, service for every uh, uh, OSPO community, uh, open source community, and uh, I I believe open source is good. So it it's a uh, it's a future. So yeah. <laughs> So basically, you say just to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful. It's IP. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Uh, I think from the uh, there's two suggestions. First, just like uh, Zheng Hua mentioned, uh, if you're doing the OSPO stuffs, you need to communicate with the community communities because a lot of people globally in different company, different size, uh, different region, different industry, there's always someone maybe have the similar questions, the similar challenges like you. So, and the, normally the open source guys are always willing to share their experiences. So maybe you can find some answers to Kate from the communities. So you don't need to start from the scratch. That's the first uh, suggestions. The second one is really, really being the hospital. You need to, once again, need to keep close with the business leaders. You need to know their challenges. You need to know their pace. So you can really get the support from them. Because uh, I just talked with uh, one of my colleagues this morning. He said that now, I, because uh, last year they want to raise an open source project, but it's quite difficult to get uh, the approval. But this year, he said, I met with a lot of customers, and uh, I know in one, two, three, these scenarios, the customer really needs us help to uh, open source, to make it the open source project so they can use that. So currently, I don't, I no longer to ask my boss says, okay, this is my proposal, we should open source it. I don't do that. I let the customer to talk directly with the <laughs> executives. So, so the executives say, oh, maybe we should open source it. That's a different side of the same open source project. So storytelling is very important. The angle is very important. That's something the Oswald guys should be focused on. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I really agree with that. Um, so kind of curious, um, uh, when everyone's seeing the topic of this session, does, there, does that remind you of a book? Yeah, so, so it's basically it's intentional, right? So um, I, I came with a, the, the title of this session, and it's basically, it's, a, uh, it's basically inspired by the book of, you know, the Zen and the Motorcycle Maintenance Arts. Um, that's basically my message. So um, how many people have read that book, if I have a raise of hand? Uh, okay, congratulations, you have a nice book to read. Uh, maybe in the next 10 years, or it, it never gets old. Um, it's a great book. It's a book suit, uh, highly suitable for engineers as well as everyone else. Uh, TLDR, no spoiler. Um, it comes with a, a natural, I would say, uh, tendency of that book actually highlights a lot about engineering practice of um, when you actually deal with a motorcycle, do you want to just drive it, or do you want to really know about how to drive it? With the second part, we're really knowing the maintenance part of it. It's uh, engineering excellence thoughts. It actually has, has a lot to do with what we do uh, here on open source. It's like, um, we, we all mentioned about like, you, you should go and do it and you should get really mastered at it. By saying mastered at it, it's like you, you're probably not going to be good at your coding alone, but you know the ecosystem, right? So when we actually come to so-called business leaders, right, you can tell them that, hey, sometimes the also leaders who need to tell you the hard story that working with the community um, I really like, you know, one line I heard from the Apache COC is um, working with open source might seem slow, but the slowness is not coming from, it's more like coming from like short-term latency, but for your long-term maintenance and your long-term growth, your throughput working with open source is definitely higher. What you're experiencing in slowness is only the short-term latency. So 
be well, be well with it and really be excellent at what you're doing and know the business. And the second part is really the arts of it. It's a book about philosophy. Uh, even though it looks like a book about engineering and culture, it's like a son and a, uh, and a father's journey. It's a philosophy book. So the natural philosophy of that book is really kind of coming to a word called quality. Again, I think like the uh, open source, sometimes you know, like we're working with our leaders and we're working with project teams, but um, our project knows us. You know, you know sometimes we see, we see the harsh words, right? It's like, hey, uh, you know, like you, um, I know that you have business to run. I know that I have something to ship, but slow down. Really easy and understand what's going on with, you know, the cloud native community with AI and with everything. And make an engineering decision you will not regret and work with the community and really trying to understand what the others are saying. Don't be too focused on the short-term gain. Be, you know, focus more on the long-term growth. And, you know, like, put yourself out there seeking for help. And, um, you know, like, once you're reaching a state, help the others. That's basically the nature of the community. Okay, thank you so much. Considering the timing, our discussion will have to end here today. Uh, and if anyone wishes to have a, a deeper uh, discussion or exchange on topics like OSPO, community growth, uh, or internationalization, or if you are interested in our next year's OSPO summit, uh, you can feel free to talk with any of us uh, off stage. Uh, thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.